and he is good to give us some of his time right now. Here at Bo- uh, Boschimer, I think I've been pronouncing it incorrectly for a while, Bob. I want to say Boschimer. Dave Nathan, the voice of radio of uh, Carolina baseball, pronounced it Boschimer. So we just got to get used to the things that we're not used to because we're not used to the stadium. I'm just going to call Carolina's ballpark. That works. It works well. They got they they don't have a sponsor name that you got to take out when you put in your uh, when you write your your pay, your uh, your story for this. Um, I love this ballpark, and you hit on it exactly the moment you sat down here. It reminded you of Auburn. It reminds me of Auburn too, except I think it's you know Auburn's Auburn is short in left, and then they've got that kind of big big gap in left center. Uh, now this feels more like a left-handed hitter's ballpark, but it's small. It's cute. Uh, if I think you could fit two of these inside Ballmwalker Stadium, but I love this park. I love small, cute little parks. This this is one of them. I would call this very quaint, very southern, charming, quaint. But it's a nice ballpark. I'm sure it's plenty good for Carolina. And I don't mean that to be condescending, but you know this. I think this park is probably perfect for Carolina. It's not quite like Northwest Arkansas. And, and while there are a ton of Carolina fans, you have Duke just down the road, NC State just down the road. You have the Durham Bulls AAA ball club here i mean you know and i know we we have the the naturals in springdale they they do great job but um there's just a lot more diversity for support in this area and so i don't think one of the college programs probably needs an eleven thousand seat stadium or whatever it is bob walker seats now so bob you you had a a piece today talk writing about peyton stovall freshman first baseman who of course was an infield was a middle infielder in high school but got to play first base to crack the lineup for the hogs this year and I think we focused a little much on the idea that they've hit a lot of home runs recently, and that's what you expect them to do. Stovall hasn't really been hitting home runs. He's been making contact. He's been reaching base, and he's been coming through in some pretty big moments. I mean, you just look at how he started that big eighth inning rally on Saturday against Oklahoma State's bullpen with just a simple single down the third base line. He's, he's turned himself into a very valuable piece of this lineup and i can't it was just recently too we were thinking that he might not be able to crack the lineup again after kendall dig started getting some starts yeah i think i had this up i mess never been my strong suit but i think since he came back from that finger injury he's hitting like like 337 and before that he was hitting like 255 or something which isn't you know bad for a freshman in the sec but based you know he was a basically seen as a first round draft pick who who turned down a lot of money to come to Arkansas because I'm sure he's going to make a whole lot more money when he gets drafted after his junior year. But, yeah, he was, um, you know, high expectations. You know, Dave Van Horner mentioned a couple times, really had high, ridiculously high expectations placed upon him for being a young guy. He just turned 19. I, I looked this up four days before the season started. So very, very young player and obviously talented, but he seems to have settled in now and, and um, you know, he's more relaxed. And I, he, he said... Um, you know that that he was c- c- kind of hard on himself, beating himself up. Uh, you know, Michael Turner mentioned the other day that he had talked, uh, talking about Stovall, talked to Michael, and I think it was Caden Wallace, and got some advice from them. It's kind of settled in more. So, I mean, their lineup's really good, and with him, it's just that with him hitting the way he has been of late, it's just that much better. What well, What's the first question you're going to ask Dave Van Horn? If it's me, then I'm asking the first question. And it's not an interview like, you know, a pregame interview where you're trying to have a conversation. Um, it would be about the starting rotation and not just about game one, but it would be about about the, the new roles that we see that we saw for guys like Will McIntyre or Hagan Smith and, and how that might change the roles that we've seen recently from uh, from for Hagan specifically and also for Jackson Wiggins. And, and maybe the idea that you saw a guy close a game on Monday and the biggest pressure cooker of the year, do you want to give him the ball in that upper, in that ch- uh, moment again? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it probably goes without saying Connor Nolan will start game one. But we need to ask to confirm because we... Uh, well, if you don't, he's not going to say it, right? Well, yeah, and also the, I guess it was the weekend he changed the rotation. I think it was at Alabama. We forgot to ask him. Just, well, I think I don't know if we much forgot. We just assumed, you know. It was assumed. That's in, right. In our business, assumption assume you know how that saying goes. I don't need to repeat that here on the radio. But so yeah, I need to. But, yeah, but do you have you decided? Are you starting Connor? Have you start? Or, I'm not going to say that. Um, we they always teach us don't ask yes or no questions unless you just want a yes or no. Say uh, who are your starters for the first two games and you know why why those guys and he might say we have they haven't decided on game two start even though they probably have and yeah and is Hagen maybe coming out of the bullpen because you can have some more flexibility there 
So, I guess, yeah, what's the pitching plan? I'd be curious to see what he thinks about this ballpark after being in it and maybe after seeing how the ball travels in practice. Because um, obviously the ball was flying <laughs> flying out of over eight Stadium last week, although it was a little more normal on Monday. I guess maybe it was a little cooler. Not cool, but maybe a little cooler. And it was a night game. I, I don't know. But, yeah, I'd be curious what he – and just he, he brought this up the other day. Somebody asked him thoughts on North Carolina. And, you know, Dave's coached um, – uh, close to 2,000 games. I, maybe if you had it in Texarkana, it's about 2,000 games, and he's never played North Carolina. To me, that's amazing. I mean, not not because they haven't scheduled them, but just you think they would have played somewhere. Because you think about the teams they've played in Supers of late. You know, it's been SEC schools sometimes, like South Carolina and Ole Miss or Missouri State, a team they're very familiar with, or even Nebraska. That's where Dave coached, and he'd faced them. And this Carolina team, you know, in this ballpark or something that's totally new to him, they've had a week to scout them. And I'm sure Matt Hobbs probably has a good, you know, coach of Wake Forest, so he probably has a good idea how this ballpark plays. Obviously, Carolina's roster has turned over since Matt was at Wake Forest. But then you've got Chris Lanzilli, who played at Wake, coming back here. I'm sure he's, uh, you know, has a good idea how to hit in this ballpark and can give the coaches some t- tips and his teammates. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of interesting uh, things, you know, going into the Super Regional. I think this team's comfortable playing on the road right now, and uh, and I think any team that wins a road regional is just comfortable going in on the road in a Super Regional. We saw that with NC State last year. I mean, NC State wins a regional in Columbia, South Carolina, and they looked pretty comfortable when they came into that intimidating atmosphere at Baum Walker, and they were never intimidated, even after a 21-2 to defeat in the first game. Um, you know, if Arkansas had played at home and had the niceties of home and then had to go on the road, I'd think, well, things are a little bit different right now. You know, I mean, none of your fans and everything. They didn't have their fans last week at the level that they're used to. They won't have the fans like they did last week this week because it's a smaller park and it's further away. But there's something about the way they played last weekend, especially in the most offensive regional and NCAA tournament history and a tough place to win. I don't I don't, I don't make anything about them being on the road. I don't think that affects them in this series. No, and they didn't just win the regional in Stillwater. They beat Oklahoma State three state three straight times. Sometimes when, a, when, a, when you win a regional on the road, you don't necessarily have to play the home team. Like I think when they went over there in 2015, they – they beat Oral Roberts, Oklahoma State, and St. John's. So then they had to play Oklahoma State once. Of course, that was in a smaller ballpark, LAP Round Stadium and all that. But, yeah, so, I mean, they basically went into Stillwater and, and took a super regional from Oklahoma State. They played them three straight days, and they took them two out of three. Now, of course, Oklahoma State had to play some extra games and all that, but that was their fault for, for losing Arkansas that first night or Saturday night. But, so, yeah, I think Arkansas, obviously, they've played all these in these tough SEC venues and, and um, see, so yeah, I think they're definitely road tested, and you know maybe with all the thing it was everything that was going on, um, it was good for them to be on the road and kind of bond. I, I know things didn't go well in Hoover, but I, I I'm gonna take a chance to pat myself on the back a little bit. I wrote a story which I thought I got really good information from guys like Zach Cox and Tim Carver and and D- Dave Jordan Tyler Spoon about they they'd been on teams that had sort of rough finishes or went on two in Hoover or had to go to Stillwater. And they'd all gone to the World Series. And it's really just about getting back home, kind of getting your feet back under you, resetting everything, and, and just going on the road with confidence. And that, that, they'd done that before, and they did it again last weekend. Well, then you got to ask Scott Forbes, the UNC head baseball coach, if he thinks that them sweeping through the SEC tournament had anything to do with them winning their regional last week. I mean, they came through the yeah. loser's bracket. That, went, that was three wins in a row. They were the team that, uh, that won the ACC tournament. And they kind of they probably needed to to win that in order to host because before that they they kind of scuffled for a while but sweeping through the ACC tournament I think is the reason that they're even playing at home in this super regional so and I agree with you about Arkansas and Hoover like whatever happens in Hoover has absolutely nothing to do with what will happen afterwards like you try to win in Hoover that's fine. Uh, but whatever happens there, you leave it behind, and the NCAA postseason is a totally different thing. I wonder if the ACC tournament is viewed the same way by those in the ACC, because just about everybody that is used to playing in the NCAA tournament in the SEC, they all say the same about Hoover. They won't. They'll say it behind closed doors, you know. Well, it make the, the SEC tournament makes money. It's programming inventory, if you will, for the SEC network. And you know, Arkansas could help if if Arkansas had gone to Hoover and won a couple games. Maybe they would have hosted 
original. They probably would have, but you know, it, it didn't happen. And there's some advantages to getting home and getting rested. I mean, they're, I think they're, you could tell Connor, I think, was pretty, pretty well rested. He went through 70 some pitches. Uh, after I'd, I'd added up, I'm, I'm lousy at math, but I think in one eight game stretch, he pitched, he had 800 pitches. Even I know that's 100 pitches a game. That's a heavy workload, especially when you look at he threw like 16 innings last year because his arm was hurt. So I think Connor looked. He looked like Connor again, which he hadn't looked like for a while. He'd pitched okay, but he was really dominant. And um, so, yeah, I think that rest, you know, Michael Turner talked about it. You know, you're catching a lot of games, and obviously that's a demanding physical position, especially that heat in in Oklahoma uh, and Stillwater. So, yeah, I just think, you know, they had to go on the road and win the the Super. Carolina's been home. They're home again. But I feel like, you know, Arkansas, these these are young guys, and they're probably – pretty refreshed physically and i'm sure they're very fired up mentally to, to play in the super regional you know what i think bob i think you're a lot better at math than you let on that's a that's a line that you'll you'll try to throw off some i think you're a lot smarter when it comes to mathematics than you actually admit i got a dean college algebra so really yes i did but you still graduated I, yeah I did. you're a sports writer you guys are all great with statistics well if if they're printed and handed handed to me or something or if i hear you say it on the radio but yeah it was late i was like a senior they kept switching advisors on me and i got this new advisor and he's looking at my transcript he says you got a dean college algebra and i was like when you were as a freshman and I was like, yeah, I, I wasn't real good at it. And honestly, the teaching assistant wasn't very good. I mean, you need to be able to teach some so guys like me can understand. And he says, well, can you graduate with this? And I'm thinking, this is about, I don't know, this is going into my last semester. And I said, well, nobody's ever brought it up before. I mean, my parents are planning to come to graduation, so I sure hope so. And then just kind of never brought it up again. You know what happened but, with me in college algebra, Bob? I failed because I didn't go to class. But I can still tabulate you know, batting averages and on-base percentages. I can figure out WHIP and OPS and uh, and yards per attempt, yards per catch. Um, it's all these numbers that I was told until about the age of 12 when folks realized that I meant when I said that I was going to get into sports radio. They said these things aren't going to help you in life. You're wasting your time. No. Sports statistics are mathematics. Oh, I th- yeah. I yeah. think you know your stuff. Yeah, but I was just glad to get that D and not get an F. You know? <laughs> well, I am too. That made you a sports writer here. Um you, you visiting anywhere here in the Raleigh Durham area? There's a lot to see here. I want to go see the Bull Durham sites. It's a beautiful campus. And of course, our publisher, Mr. Hussman, went to school there. That's He's right. donated a lot of money to the journalism school. But it's a beautiful campus. I think it's a beautiful town. You know, Franklin Avenue or Street or whatever it is. It's, it's kind of their Dixon Street. And yeah, we went to a real good. If anybody's um, going to be in town, we went to the top of the something and it's on franklin street great view good food nice people sounds memorable and we went to sutton's which i, I guess ty did a show from there I, I didn't see your picture they had a lot of pictures in the wall they haven't put ty's picture up yet apparently but it's kind of an old school drugstore counter really it's not health food but they have really good burgers and good sandwiches they do have some salads i don't know if they have any lettuce in them but they do have some salads good milkshake um, they had a, a cool thing. I don't know if they're for sale or display, but they had all kinds of old soda bottles, and they've got antique Coke machines in there if you like to see that stuff. So I'd, I'd recommend that place. Um, a lot of good places. Yeah, I'd like to get over to Duke. I was there about 20 years ago in Arkansas. I was over there for the Outdoor Nationals. They had it at Duke's football stadium, which is basically, I don't know what it's like now, but back then it was basically like a track stadium seating-wise. And uh, But, yeah, if you go over Probably it'd be cool to go into uh, in Cameron Indoor Stadium and the facilities here at Carolina. It's just a beautiful place to drive around. So yeah, if you're here, hopefully you can get out and do some things. Partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, including updated odds on the NBA playoffs, fights, and even next season's futures. And don't forget that the MLB is back as well. Who are you picking to win the World Series? Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's it's super easy to get started. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code believe that's B L E A V to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.